Hello, all you wonderful people out there. This is Kevin from CC Pipe here, where we focus on productivity and pipeline for creatives. And in today's video, we are finally going to take a look at Photoshop macros or actions as they call them. And uh, I've been thinking about making this one for quite a while and I finally got around to it. So to start us off, if you don't know, actions or macros are used for automating things you do repeatedly to save time. So basically you record a sequence of what you do in Photoshop that you can then uh, repeat with the press of a button. So it's usually repetitive, boring tasks that you can make a lot quicker. And uh, as usual, why do we care about this? Well, actions, they save time and potentially a lot of it. So once you work professionally and your time is valuable, they are definitely worth considering. So let's get into it. First, we find a panel, of course, and uh, that's under window and then actions. And uh, I like to dock it over here to the left and I always have it up when I'm working and I use it all the time. And if you never use this panel, I believe it will have several default actions in here. And if you don't want those, you can just go to the panel options and uh, choose clear actions. And uh, we also have the same options as with many other panels in Photoshop to load in or save actions as well, which is great both if you want to share them with others, of course, or if you are switching computers. And uh, by the way, this can also be done with many other things in Photoshop, for example, curves, presets, just to mention one. But let's create an action then. And I like to show things with practical examples. So for this one, I thought we could create an action adjusting images for web output. And uh, just like what I have over here. And uh, if I run this, it will prepare this beer render for web. And uh, by the way, I will also make this action available for download in the description in case you don't want to follow along yourself. So moving on, the actions panel has two modes. And the first one is what we see now, the button mode, which I just showed you. And the second mode is for editing and creating actions. And uh, that's what we want to do. So we go to the panel options once again, and then uncheck button mode. Now we get more of a list where we can open and collapse these items and the folders here are called sets and you can also save these actions by sets or you do save them by sets. But it is basically just a group or a folder. And in the set we have the actual actions and if we expand one of them we can see then uh, also the individual steps that it contains. And uh, even one step further we see the settings that were used as well. So let's get started creating this. We can start by making a new set for which we go to the options and uh, create set and I'll call it output. And next we go to new action and uh, this I'll call web 2k. This is the set we want it in and you can also set an F key shortcut plus a color for the button mode if you like. And when we've done that, we press record. And uh, at this point, Photoshop will record what you do. So pay attention to what you click on. But that said, you can, of course, edit and re-record if you make a mistake somewhere. And uh, you'll see that as we go along. But uh, what do I want to do here for web output? Well, first, I want to flatten any potential layers. And uh, that's under layers and uh, flatten image. And you should see now that in the actions list right here, it has recorded flatten image. And that's great, that's our first step done. And uh, for web, we want sRGB, of course, for our profile. And uh, that we'll find under edit and uh, convert profile. And then we make sure that it is set to sRGB. There we go. And uh, next, I want to resize my document to 2K. And uh, here we are going to encounter a bit of a problem, but I think that's just a good thing. That's something that you'll need to be able to deal with. So the problem is this, I can resize the image using width or height and alternatively using both. But for the latter, if the image ratio isn't always the same, it will get stretched. And uh, we obviously want the longer side to be 2K, regardless whether it is a horizontal or vertical, which we won't know. So however, there is a neat trick for this. And I previously thought you needed to write a script, but it uh, making this video, I realized you can solve it right here within the action. And that involves creating a conditional. And uh, that we find under the menu, but first we are going to stop recording and uh, then go over here and choose insert conditional. And in the first drop down here, we have plenty of different conditions. And the one we are looking for is right here at the very top. And uh, this is a simple if condition and it reads, if current document is landscape, right? Then play this action and uh, which we choose from the list. 
and otherwise instead play this action. So it allows us to run two different actions depending on whether the document is landscape or not. And uh, this means we need to create two little actions to help us out. One that makes the width 2K and another that makes, it, uh, makes the height 2K. So that's what we'll do. I'll uh, cancel out of this and then we'll click on new down here. And uh, this one I will name 2KH for horizontal and uh, leave the rest as it is. And uh, now I'll just press Control alt i for image size and uh, then we'll change the width to 240 pixels and uh, not touching height. And uh, also I'll uh, toggle the constraint proportions making sure that it is turned on. And uh, reason being, and I don't really know exactly how this works, but it seems like it only registers the parameters that you actually changed in the dialog. So that's why. And uh, now we can press OK. And to ensure that it worked as we wanted it to, we can open that entry in the actions panel right here. And it should hopefully only say with 248 pixels. Constraint proportions and uh, not anything for height. So far, so good. And uh, also remember to stop recording. And uh, now we only need to do the same for height and I'm just going to speed through this and uh, then we'll move on from there. Great, now we can go back to making our condition. So to continue where we left off, I select the last item in the list to make sure we continue from the right spot and then go to options once again for insert conditional. And we wanted the one already selected here. And now we should find our small help actions we made in these drop downs. So if it is landscape, we want to run 2kh. And if it isn't, we want to run 2kv. And then we just press OK. Pretty neat. And we've now solved that problem. And also note that the actions need to be in the same set for them, the helper actions, that is, for them to be available for the conditional, by the way. Then let's make the last part and uh, uh, I want to sharpen the image and there are of course multiple ways of doing that but I'll be doing it like this this time. So remember to press record and uh, first we make a layer copy with control J and apply a high pass filter which we'll find over here under filters and uh, high pass and I think uh, 0.5 will be fine and then I'm going to set the blending mode to uh, a vivid light and uh, then I'm also going to take down the opacity quite a bit and uh, lastly I'm also going to merge the layers and uh, that's all of it so we can press stop and we are done next we probably want to try it out to see if it works and I'm going to undo what we have done with this image in the history panel right here and then select the action in the list and we can press the play button. And uh, I think it looks like we didn't mess anything up. However, if we did, we could of course go into uh, the action once again and correct that. And you can move the parts around, delete them and redo as much as you would like. As a bonus, I wanted to show uh, how you can give the user the ability to choose a value. And in this case, the high pass filter will work well for that. So I'll duplicate this action we just made and uh, that we can do from the options right here. Then I'm going to open a new one and uh, select the high pass part. And uh, then we're going to delete it with the button here. Then place the selection on the previous item. But instead of pressing record to redo it, uh, I'll go to the options again and choose menu item. And this will allow me to choose the high pass filter, but give the user the option of choosing the value and it's asked us to select a menu item. So I go over to filters and then high pass and then we can press OK. And if I now run this action, it will stop and ask me what value I want to use and then continue with the rest. So I'll name this one web2k and uh, select HP perhaps for high pass. And uh, then I think I can go back to the button mode and we can try this one out. Uh, then just do some undo history and then press run and it's asked us to give the value and then does the rest. Very nice. And uh, that's it. We've now created a very useful action in Photoshop and if you want you can find it available for download in the description as well. And lastly I wanted to mention that in your action you can record running other actions as long as they are loaded in and you can also record running a script if there is something you can solve with, can't solve rather, with uh, just an action. 
And also check out my video for Bridge, including how to batch process images with actions. And uh, you can find that video on screen in just a second. And with that, I hope you found this helpful and let me know what you end up using it for. Thank you so much for watching and uh, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. It helps me out a lot. And also, if you have any productivity questions or suggestions for future videos, make sure to throw those in the comments below. Once again, thank you and until next time, have a good one.